Well, hello and welcome to another session of uh, the V World Tech LC uh, training videos. And today we are going to be using the VWT Lab uh, one that we started creating in the previous video. And we will continue by adding a uh, Active Directory DNS uh, server onto our existing uh, VMware infrastructure so we can connect our vCenter and our uh, VROps. Okay, and here we are on our trusty uh, website at uh, www.vworldtechllc.com, and that's where we have all the resources and all the training videos that we're going to be using today and in future uh, videos. So you go to the main VWorldTech LLC uh, portal page. And in here today, we are going to be visiting the VWorldTech training videos. And as you can see, we have our first two videos of this series in VMware, the VWT Lab 1, which we're going to follow with VWT Lab 2 today and the VSOM Module 1, which will continue tomorrow with the VSOM Module 2 uh, from the hosted uh, VMware Labs. As you can see, our first video is uh, completely the done. Operations management. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, building your own uh, VMware. 6.0 or 5.5 in our case. And you can uh, go ahead and uh, use the videos uh, that we have on the libraries and, and everything else that you need as far as resources, main, yeah. brand news every day, uh, and everything else that we have. So let's get started. Um, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start opening some of my already created some of my uh, shortcuts here. Uh, and I'm putting them on my uh, tabs. Uh, for my vCenter, my VROps, and my main uh, system right now, my main ESXi host, which happens to be a um, Dell R510. So we're going to connect to the Dell so that we can see right now the physical uh, device, in a sense, that is actually running our ESXi host. And I'm going to be connecting through the iDRAC, that's the remote console uh, from Dell. And it's a great tool uh, because it allows me to see the actual physical device and manage the actual physical device uh, without any intervention uh, within the operating system. In our case, the hypervisor, which is the ESXi. So if I'm having some issues, which by the way, uh, just to let you know, I have created a, uh, a problem in the uh, device by disconnecting one of the power supplies. It was running just fine, but uh, I wanted to make sure that we created some physical uh, issues in here uh, on my power supplies so as to see whether uh, the vCenter uh, will catch it and also VR ops so it's better to know what the problem is to make sure that our troubleshooting skills are, uh, are correct all right so on the next one I'm gonna go ahead and open up my vCenter which is down right now and my VR ops is down right now so how do I get to uh, with everything down, the only thing I have is my ESX host, which is not web accessible. Well, I'm going to use my uh, VMware client, which allows me to connect directly either to the ESX host, in my case, or the vCenter once we bring it up. But we cannot bring the vCenter up until we're done uh, creating an Active Directory uh, DNS server. And I'm entering the default username, which is uh, root, and the password that I assigned to my SX host uh, when I installed the uh, software. FYI, you can actually install the software remotely, um, which is a lot easier. If you have access like the iDRAC or the ILO, in the case of HP, or so any server that is really uh, enterprise based or really designed for this will have uh, some type of remote access and from here uh, you can actually go on the system 
and you have an option in here which is called console media and the console media allows you uh, you have a remote uh, console like a KVM type of uh, access and your console media would actually allow you to load um, a uh, an ISO your ESXi for example 55 or 60 and actually remotely uh, just with an IP address completely installed everything uh, from scratch so it's a great tool if you don't have access directly to your server okay so we have now access our uh, host and as you can see I have a vCenter and a VROps ready to go but I do not have right now a uh, Active Directory server uh, in our case, I decided to use for our uh, test a Windows 2012 R2. Uh, I know that in most of these training uh, classes, a lot of people use the 2008 R2. We will be creating a 2008 R2 server, uh, but it will be not to be the Active Directory uh, or DNS. It will be for something else. So, how do we create now a um, a DNS Active Directory server? Well, I already downloaded. Uh, the ISO and uh, Microsoft is great at uh, uh, giving you the 90 day, 120 day um, type of uh, trial, just like ESXi does, so that you have plenty of time to install, run, test, like I do. It's, it's great resources, they are free, they're fully available and fully supported by both Microsoft and VMware. So let's get started. So the first thing I need to know is where my ISO is and if I'm gonna have enough room on my uh, storage data store. So, and I do have it. Uh, here's my the data store that I'm gonna be using. I have a capacity of 224 gigs and I have about 99 gigs free. Remember, this is gonna be a dedicated uh, DC server, right? So. I don't really need that much room. I want to give it a little more uh, power on the CPU, maybe give it two uh, CPUs and a little more memory, maybe six gigs should suffice. And all it's going to do is really manage my uh, DNS infrastructure or my Active Directory infrastructure within my uh, virtualized lab. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and browse the data store. One best practice that I have learned through the years is if I'm going to be using a lot of different ISOs in the sense of different operating systems or different whatever you know I'm going to be using, I like to create an ISO directory that doesn't take that much room on your data center and it makes life a lot easier uh, than to install new uh, or to launch new instances based on that ISO. Um, by the way, the ISO could be a golden image, it doesn't have to be just the operating system. If you create a golden image and convert it to an ISO, that works just as well. In our case, we're going to be using uh, the um, Windows, Microsoft Windows 64-bit, um, obviously, uh, for in our case, for Windows 12, um, Server 12 uh, R2. So, let's get started. So, what we're going to do is just create a VM, just like we do with any other VM, new virtual machine. And it's going to be a typical one. I don't have to go into custom. I'm going to customize it after I'm done with the core. And I'm going to call it, uh, in our case, it's going to be called VWT for Virtual World Technologies Dev. I always call my servers Dev, Dev1, Dev2. Uh, I don't know why. It's just uh, something that I do. But that's what we're going to call it. And yes, we, I'm going to select uh, this data store, FYI, we're on a single host uh, environment right now. Uh, part of number two uh, of this module is going to be not just only creating this data set, this uh, uh, Active Directory and DNS uh, server, but also adding our number two uh, ESX host and actually creating a, a very cool cluster. Uh, and, you know, and we're going to be implementing DRS and, uh, and also high availability, HA. And so on subsequent modules and trainings, we'll be playing with all of that stuff. It's going to be super cool. And also we're going to set up a full uh, Horizon or VDI uh, VMware-based 
uh, environment on that new server. So that's going to be our module number three, creating your VDI uh, labs. It's super cool. All right, so uh, we're going to select it in here. And it is going to be a 2012 uh, server. Remember I mentioned this on, on the, my past training video. Uh, VMware doesn't really care uh, so much as the operating system goes. It, this is more for you to tag that VM, for you to let it on, be able to do a search on, especially if you are in a large uh, type of uh, infrastructure where you're going to have a lot of different hosts or VMs, um, to know what VMs and group them by operating system. So, again, best practices, make sure that you, you, you name them well. Uh, how many NICs or virtual NICs do I want? I can put as many, you know, uh, as four to connect directly to the virtual switch. In my case, since it's going to be thing uh, or a singular one, I want to keep it uh, easy. So I'm just going to select one, but I could select two if I want to use one for data and the other one just for services. So to handle all the DNS and everything else, I will assign an IP address to that and say, you handle the DNS by you being the default DNS uh, server on IP and then the other one just say okay then you can handle data if you're running something else not in our case since DCs really don't lend themselves to to run anything else other than the uh, data center or the uh, I'm sorry the DC uh, services and DNS so one and I have not created any uh, other distributed switches or anything else like that we will be doing that in uh, in other labs, but right now I'm just going to do a standard adapter to my VM network. So that's the only thing I have, and that's where it's going to go. Okay, uh, for storage, I'm going to give it more than 40. I just I'm going to give it 60 because I have enough room, and that way I don't run into problems. But I'm going to give it on thin provisioning. And what is the difference between thin provision versus thick uh, provision, lazy zero or eager? Well, thick provisioning means that you are allocating all of that space in your disk specifically for this VM. Uh, that means that nothing else can touch it, right? It's allocated to it and only for it. The difference between lazy zero and eager zero is that that whole entire space, if it is lazy zero, it'll start growing much like thin provisioning, but it'll still be occupied fully. Eager zero means that immediately, the first time you use the uh, the uh, virtual drive, it will allocate that space and say it's fully allocated, you can't touch it by any other VM. So that's what I mean. Same provisioning allows you to grow, right? Uh, although you are allocating virtually uh, X amount, 60 gigs in our case, you're only growing them by chunks, right, or blocks of two to four gigs a piece. So every time you need more room out of that 60 gigs, it takes a block of four gigs. Okay, so this is our uh, uh, definition of, of what we're going to be using, but we're going to edit the, uh, the settings on this particular virtual machine to add or change the memory and to add or change the CPUs. Uh, so right now it's uh, running at four gigs. I'm gonna increase that to six, especially when I'm installing it because I have plenty of room, nothing else being, and actually I'm gonna go to eight because I do have it. I have 16 gigs available to me, and right now this is the only thing that's gonna run, so I install it with eight, and then I adjust it down to, uh, to six. Uh, makes no difference for this type of environment. So I'm gonna give it two of each, in that way, or actually two uh, virtual sockets, and, and one core, I'm gonna change that, sorry. Two cores, two virtual sockets. That I'm not gonna wanna change later on. I wanna leave this as that, as it is right now. Okay, so I think we're ready to go. Now comes the most important part. At boot up, I have not told it yet, I have not told this instance where to boot from. So I need to tell it to find that ISO, and remember, I want it to power on at when it connects, right? So when it boots up the first time, it knows where to find the, the ISO, and then boot from there. Uh, you can use also a host device, right? So that if I plug in, let's say for example, a USB device 
or if I plug in a CBD uh, DVD ROM or anything like that, it will access that uh, through your media uh, or your client, right? So anything that you have in your particular client. But in my case, like I said, it makes life a lot easier if I have them all in my data store and then I browse to it. And like we saw before, it was on the ISO directory. And it's this ISO right here. I have a 2008, a 7, Windows 7, a Windows 8, and a 2012. That basically covers pretty much everything I'm going to be using uh, during the training labs. Okay, so uh, here we go. And it's going to connect our power on. And all of our... Uh, uh, properties are set up and ready to go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. It has completed um, building the uh, virtual machine. That means that it has created the BMX files um, describing basically the virtual machine properties and it has created the uh, BMDK files which are your virtual disk files. Where the data gets stored. That's very much uh, what it is. Okay. Um, by the way, later on, we are also going to use simulators to actually simulate uh, uh, shared storage from EMC as well as from NetApp. It's going to be super fun. Uh, you're going to learn how to all of a sudden create a, a SCSI or a uh, SAN type of environment. It doesn't really exist. It'll be completely virtual. So a lot of fun stuff. All right, so we're ready to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and power it up. I selected my console so I can see it. And let's see what happens. And it should start appearing here very soon. And once I start seeing the uh, on this on uh, this screen, I start seeing that it's coming up. It's time for me to open up my uh, my virtual machine console. This is really where I manage basically everything. So as you can see, it's running here on the console. And we're going to open a second console that we can manipulate. So. Later on, we can use this as our, our control center, but this is going to be really uh, our, um, in a sense, it's, it acts as a remote desktop uh, session. Okay, so English, US, yes, sir. Okay, so clicking in and clicking out of the screens. Uh, if you're not used to this, it's a little bit tricky at first. When you click in, you cannot get out, right? You need to do a control alt to get out. Once later on we install the uh, on the VM uh, the guest tools, the uh, uh, VMware tools, once the operating system is installed then we'll be able to navigate in and out of the uh, of the screens with no problem. So but for now good to know, control. Next we're going to install, oh sorry, wrong uh, VM. Okay, so I made a small mistake. Okay, so I made a small mistake, but one that is actually very easy to uh, to resolve. And what we're going to do is we're going to go. I powered off the uh, VM because I selected a nice so that was for a Windows 8, uh, not for Windows uh, 2012. So we're going to go ahead and edit the uh, uh, the settings, and we're going to select the correct uh, ISO. So we're going to go back to browse our data store. We're going to go to our ISO directory, and this time we're going to select the correct one, which is right here at the bottom, server, instead of the uh, WinBlue for uh, Windows 8. So. I apologize for that, but hey, turn out to be great because you can see how easy it is to fix an issue like this. So we're going to say OK. And again, we're just going to go ahead and restart it and make sure that this time comes up with a Windows 2012 R2 uh, screen. And again, once the uh, Windows logo comes up, we're going to go ahead and start our uh, uh, virtual machine console. Actually, we can start right now too, but we're going to wait and see if uh, everything comes up okay.
Okay, so here we go with our uh, Windows 12 um, screen, which is the right one, that's the one we wanted. We're gonna go ahead and open our uh, screen here. So we have a full, uh, here we go. We're gonna close this. And for now, we're gonna minimize everything else. I do not like cluttered uh, desktops. Okay, so let's go ahead and follow this up and let's start with Windows 2012 R2. Yes, we want to install now. And again, this is the uh, 90 day trial or 60 day trial. Uh, so we don't have to worry about the licensing. Uh, it's just for us to, to work with our training labs and I see how it works. Okay. We have a little problem in here. I'm gonna go ahead and rescan. Okay, I will fix this problem in a second. Okay, after a minor setup or uh, setback, sorry, uh, we are ready to proceed. By the way, make sure that uh, that you actually download uh, the proper ISO. Uh, just download the latest one. Uh, they are free for 190 days for you to try. And uh, they're definitely well worth it. So we're back here uh, with uh, installing our uh, Windows 2012 R2. And we want to pick the right. Uh, so we want the standard evaluation, the core evaluation, right? Standard with GUI. That's the one that we're going to be using. We have also a data center or the standard, you know, either one or just core, but we want the graphical user interface. All right, we're going to click next. We accept the license. And we're going to do a custom install. And we're going to accept the 60 gigs that we allocated right here as we did it on the. Uh, on our uh, properties if we check out our settings in here we can see that that is uh, what we uh, allocated for it our 60 gigs right here so and there they are and remember we're seeing provision but the operating system thinks it's allocating all 60 gigs it will continue using it if it was a fully allocated uh, volume. And here we go. I'm going to go ahead and pause it when it starts once it hits uh, 1%, and I will go ahead and restart it when, it's, uh, when we're ready to keep going. Okay, so after no major uh, issues, it just took uh, about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so to copy all the files and reboot. Um, and now we are to the point where we need to enter our administrator uh, password that we'll be using throughout uh, the labs and everything else. So pick whichever one you want, make sure you remember it. Okay, it is now finalizing the settings, and there we go. So uh, another thing to note is the Control Alt Delete, uh, which is usually what you will use on a regular physical computer to log in or to uh, give you access to it. But in VMware, when you're using VMs, uh, instead of the Control Alt Delete, you need to use the Control Alt insert keys and that acts as a control alt delete okay so we're going to enter the password that we just created
and this is our first time so it's preparing our desktop and I'm gonna go ahead and configure my desktop the way I like my desktop feel free to configure yours any which way you want um, I just like that consistency in my uh, in my uh, environment yes I do and these are some new things well that if you're used to Windows 2008 R2 servers maybe a little bit different on uh, 2012 R2 uh, but it's really on the graphical interface the whole concept of using dashboards which I think is great uh, because it allows you to really uh, handle a lot of the main core tasks of the Microsoft server uh, without having to find all the different tools in different places like 2008 R2 is unless you're very used to it um, promoting the, the those roles uh, creating those roles can be a little bit difficult at first uh, but right now we have our uh, main dashboard uh, which is what you're going to see uh, that we're going to be using really to manage our network uh, or our infrastructure, our server, everything is going to be coming out of these dashboards as we start adding roles and features but for right now we're going to start adding the core uh, tools that I usually use um, that I want to have already ready for me here so we're going to go ahead and click in here and we're going to basically add uh, some of the uh, the things that we're going to be using to my start menu and then we're going to add them to the um, to the main uh, uh, desktop so we're going to click down here where all of our uh, stuff is at and we already have the explorer we want to pin this guy to start and we're going to use a much easier way of doing this because otherwise it'll take us back to there all the time so let's start with the administrative tools and all you do is basically control press your control key and click on whatever items you want to add I need my 64 here definitely my performance monitors and my resource and most of these guys also as well Okay, so we're gonna pin these guys to taskbar and that will give us a good grouping of our system tools that we're gonna be using throughout. And then I'm gonna pick a couple of them that I'm gonna need uh, for uh, on my taskbar, on my uh, desktop. So I'm gonna take the documents and I'm gonna take my resource monitor and also my services because I need to find out what is going on uh, really quickly definitely my PowerShell which is already on my desktop uh, but I also want the ISC version of it I use PowerShell quite a bit and you should too okay and now we're gonna add our accessories uh, grouping and those pretty much all of them I'm gonna put on the start because I may need them at some point and then we'll select just like we did with the other ones, which ones we want on our taskbar. And believe it or not, some of these will come very handy later on uh, when we are um, I'm doing the shift instead of control. There we go. Sorry about that. What do we could do? Shift. This mouse doesn't want to work for with me today. I don't know why. Okay. Very quickly here. And now we're going to pick all this guys. Start. Perfect. And now we're going to pick whichever ones we need. 
In my case, always pick control pad, my calculator, my file explorer, and I run my notepad, my pen, my step recorder, my remote desktop, and I think that should do it. Yep. Okay. So now we're going to pin this to the taskbar, and that should do it. All right. Perfect. Oh, nope. We forgot one more. Very important. The control pad. Okay. I think we're set. So I'm going to organize these guys really quickly. So that we can find out, we are set to be 105. We're going to change that to a static IP address here in a little bit. Uh, I'll show you how to do that so that we have a static IP address for our DNS uh, server. And now we're going to organize in here. Let's put you here. I don't see my IE, so I'm going to bring it. it. Get some organization in here really quickly. My accessories here. Okay, that should do it. And now we're gonna bring back our, um, our dashboard. So what are the first things that we wanna do? Well, the first thing we wanna do is to make sure that we have a static IP address. And also that we are gonna be doing some uh, checking here with our uh, control panel because the first thing I'm gonna do is turn off the firewall. Uh, I know uh, some people are gonna French this, but while I'm installing everything I need to install, I really don't need my firewall to be active. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. For most of our tests, the firewall really becomes more of a issue um, than not. I'm not saying that in normal you know, standard situations or environments you will have firewalls, you will have to punch holes through the firewall, but in our case we want to make sure that everything runs very smooth, so we're going to take out the firewall. Okay, that's done. And we're going to go ahead and see which IP address that I want is available. In my case, I'm going to see if my 100 address is available. I believe it is. So just a quick ping. No, it's not. Okay. He gave us 105, so we're going to leave it as 105. And that should be ourselves. Okay. 105 it is for us. Okay. So we're going to go to our connection settings. And we have nothing connected right now, so let's go ahead and switch it to um, a static IP address. So we're going to go ahead and change our adapter settings. We're going to click on properties. We're going to be changing our TCP IP B4, version 4. Um,
Okay. And instead of using DHCP like we are right now, we're going to be using a static IP address of 192.168.0.0.0. We're going to uh, leave it as a default class B, 255, 255, 255, 0 on the mask. And our default gateway is going to be standard, so 192, 168, 0, that one. That's what I have on my local network, is the 192, 168 network. So we are going to set the DNS for this one only at 192, 168, 0, one. Later on, when we set up our uh, vCenter and anything else that depends on DNS, we will use this 105 as our primary preferred DNS server and that one as our secondary. Say OK. We're going to get a little bit of un uh, alarming here, but we're fine now. And now we're going to change some things in here that we need. Uh, the name to start with. So we're going to go to our local server. And this is where you find a lot of um, the stuff that you can do, uh, quick changes like we're going to be doing. So this will be a last change because it will, it will require a uh, reboot. But we're going to go ahead and enable the uh, remote desktop so we can do RTPs to uh, our server by default they are not enabled on any of the servers uh, that's our static IP address so that's perfect that's the version we're running uh, standard evaluation we're not going to do any uh, updates right now we're going to leave it as it is since the uh, I just downloaded the ISO so it should be perfectly fine uh, we're in Denver, beautiful Colorado, so we're going to change that, um, our time zone here to Mountain. By default, it's always going to be on Pacific. So that done. And what else do we want? This. This, to me, I'm sorry to say, I know I understand the enhanced security, but it really is a hassle when I'm doing uh, testing and stuff like that. So I turn it off. Uh, it's a virtual machine, so I don't really care uh, if anything happens to it. In my case, for training, for dev, uh, for development, so, so be it. Done. Uh, everything is done now. Last part. We need to, before we elevate it to, uh, to a DNS server, we're going to go ahead and give it a name. You have to do this here first. Because once you um, change the role to be an Active Directory DC uh, or a uh, DNS server, then you cannot change the name. It will completely mess up everything. So click change in here. We are going to give it the name that we gave it to the, um, to the VM. So BWG dev. We're going to say OK. And it's going to tell us that it needs to uh, reboot the uh, the system. So anytime you change that name, it is a requirement that you actually reboot it. So we're going to do that. Everything else is said. We have taken out the firewall, the IE enhancement security configuration, remote desktop is enabled. Uh, it's got the correct time zone and the right name. Here we go. So as you can see on both, is rebooting uh, the um, and we can actually see the performance. That's why I keep them both separate of the VM itself as it is running. So as I'm watching the VM booting up, I can actually see live um, the uh, the CPU, the memory, um, mainly the CPU is really what it's looking for uh, on the utilization because it's really where you're going to get most bottlenecks. Uh, so this is a great way to just take a look at it. You can add
add or save these statistics, which will be uh, laid on. You can change your uh, chart option in here and see what you're actually looking at, right? So this is real time for CPU. You can go and say, well, let's see what it's actually doing on my network, um, right? And then apply that. Or I can go and say, okay, well, let's see the actual network utilization right now as it's booting up and see what is going on in here. So if I click on either one of these guys, I can see the uh, utilization. For example, I can see on this one. I can also see the events uh, for this particular uh, VM as it is coming up. And here it is, it's finally up. So what is the next step? Well, the next step is to really make add the features that VMware really needs to manage this VM properly. Um, let me go ahead and put it back on performance so we can watch it while it, we're doing uh, and we're going to change the chart option back to CPU and see the impact of uh, on the CPU uh, right now we're just using uh, usage which is really pretty much all I need so we're going to apply this and we're going to go ahead and log in so remember to instead of control alt delete we're going to do control alt insert I'll apply the password that we had assigned before. And here we are. Let me move some of these guys around. Cleaner. Voila. Okay, so we are back um, on the dashboard. And one thing to note is the main dashboard is going to work on this local computer. Well, the beauty of, as we are going to see later on, is that once we elevate uh, uh, our, com our server right now to an active directory, uh, domain controller, that's what DC stands for, uh, it creates a forest and you can add more servers later on to that forest but you still manage uh, most of the servers including your local server from here, from one your core server or your uh, domain controller, your primary domain controller. So in our case we're going to go to the local server again where we were before, uh, make sure that everything is running fine Okay, and then we're ready now to, uh, we're going to check our uh, Internet Explorer, make sure that it's working fine too. Let's set up really quickly here. And that's about all it takes. And let's give it a test. And there we go. Beautiful thing. Perfect. Okay. Now what we're going to do then is we're going to elevate the uh, our server uh, by adding a role of the Active Directory. So we're going to convert our just standard uh, Windows 2012 R2 server into a domain controller. And in order to do that, we're going to go to the dashboard and we're going to add roles and features. And we're going to use a role based uh, installation. You can also add, and we are going to create a secondary uh, Windows 2012 server as a remote desktop server install later on for our uh, VDI uh, lab. But for right now, um, we're just going to use it for uh, uh, our domain controller. And here it is. That's the server that we're going to be using. And we are going to be using the Active Directory uh, domain services right here. 
When I click in there, these are all the subcategories, all, all the, the required services that will be also installed as features uh, for the Active Directory. So we're going to go ahead and add these features. And I'm also going to add the remote access. Well, actually nothing else yet, but later on I'm going to add the remote access. And I'm going to enable also as well uh, DNS. So I'm going to install on top of the Net Frame 4.5, the Net Framework .NET 3.5, because it's got extra features that I'm going to need for other um, things later on. And I'm already going to go ahead and enable my SNMP service. And what that does, a simple network management protocol, is that it will allow me later on. Uh, to register the server uh, with other tools like uh, WMI tools, SNMP tools like SolarWinds or uh, Nagios or whatever we're going to be using later on or even SCCM uh, to manage our Windows environment. So we're going to have features in there and we are ready to go. Yes sir, Active Directory right here and everything that we need. So. We're going to let it install. This is normal. Don't worry about it. It's a normal, um, it's not an alarm really. Um, I always click the restart the destination server automatically if it is required. And then we just click install. And the start the installation here. And when it is completed, uh, I will go ahead and restart the, uh, uh, the monitoring or the uh, recording on the lab. Okay, so we have completed uh, the installation but not the configuration. As you can see here it says configuration required, installation succeeded, and these are all the dependencies that we have installed with the uh, Active Directory. So we're going to go ahead and close this. And now we can see that Active Directory has show up in here, so now we can actually manage our actually uh, our uh, Active Directory. And look, very important right now. What is this? Configuration required for Active Directory domain services, your DNS. So we have to elevate our DC, our domain controller, uh, to be a domain services server. And before you had to do a DC promo. That was uh, on 2008 R2, you type DC promo. But on 2012, it's really cool because it allows you to promote it right from the GUI. So it's very easy to uh, promote your Active Directory uh, controller to, uh, to a server. So we are going to create uh, our domain. Uh, that's the .com, what we're going to call it, right? And uh, we're going to add a new forest. So we're going to start from scratch. Our server, this server is going to be the root domain name server. That's the main one. And this is asking us what we want to call our forest. We are going to call it the WT Lab, because that's the Virtual World Technologies Lab right here in Colorado.com. That's going to be our DNS. Uh, name right here, VWT. <coughs> and yes, it is a forest functional level of 2012 R2, although you could pick out 2008 R2 if you were going to create a forest or a cluster, server cluster of 2008 R2s. In our case, everything we're going to be running mainly is going to be on 2012, so that's what we're going to leave it. Right there. Okay, we're going to enter a password. This is going to be the password for the um, the password for the DNS for your domain. And I'm going to use the same password I use for my server, but you can use wherever you want. And I'm just trying to keep things uh, simple and clean, so that's why I do that. That's normal, it's perfectly fine. 
and we are now going to create a DNS delegation. It's going to be a single forest, single server. So we don't have to do anything or extend the. Uh, so we're going to call these the same the uh, the na BIOS domain name. So it's going to be the same for us as we um, as I named it uh, on the other one. So VWT Lab. There it is. It appears right there. That's what we entered it before. Our names. Our server name is VWT Dev. And the domain name is going to be VWT Lab. So it'll be VWT Dev dot VWT Lab dot com. Watch. Yes, perfectly fine. It's going to create the database for the uh, domain uh, and the Active Directory. That's where it stores all the different uh, names and uh, parts of your components of your Active Directory. Everything is fine. Yes, DNS server. Yes, uh, yes. And the domain is going to be VWT Lab. Perfect. Let's make sure everything is correct. And everything looks fine in here. Everything is default. So we're going to click next. And it's very fine, the prerequisites right now for domain controller. So to promote really the Active Directory uh, to it, this is mainly normal, right? Yeah, this comes from the delegation of DNS servers. They're not alarms, right? It's just telling you something that you need to know so we are free to click install from here and let it install or promote really the server uh, from a DC a domain controller onto a DNS server and again those these two uh, alarms or notices are normal for what we're doing so they can be ignored in this case and here we go it's going to go ahead and reboot um, this server we're going to say close And it will restart by itself. Uh, it will restart and continue uh, the uh, the promoting the uh, domain controller onto a DNS server. There may be two, one or two um, reboots. One thing about these training labs is that we don't prepare anything. We are flying just like you would in your lab. Uh, so that if we make mistakes, we will repair them. And you can see what mistakes we made so that you don't make them. Okay, as you can see, it's applying all the new uh, roles that we have added to the server. And now we're going to take a look at it and see what it looks like. Right now, as you can see, we are logging into our VWT lab, which is uh, our uh, what we named. Our, uh, our domain. So we are actually logging in as domain administrator. We enter the password that we created when we uh, named the, uh, the server and the password for the domain. And we'll start our uh, automatically. Uh, we have it set up so that it automatically uh, starts up the uh, the dashboard. Okay. And as you can see, it's right now uh, loading everything it needs, but it's going to tell us that we still have some configuration uh, issues in here. It's adding now, as you can see, the DNS, the Active Directory. Uh, roles and information so we can go to the active directory and see what is running if we have any alarms or issues which we probably will uh, because we haven't finished configuring everything yet so we see the active directory role 
and our task menu is in here which allows us to add roles and features directly to this or remove them we have our DNS server in here now running also as well and here it is so now we're going to go back to our dashboard and see what we need to configure this local we're sitting here and now we're going to verify that it is that we belong to the bwtlab.com domain so as you can see our full computer name now is bwtdev.bwtlab.com so now we are a full-blown active directory dns server and from here now we can go ahead and configure our uh, our uh, vCenter from scratch um, and we will configure it so that it joins the domain we're going to be installing the VW Center on a 2008 R2 server and then we will be using the VWTR ops also uh, installed with it so now that we have created this we're going to go ahead and start with the vCenter uh, install Oh, I'm sorry. No, actually, we are going. We are not done yet. <laughs> One more thing we need to do that I almost forgot is to install the VM tools. That will give us an advantage uh, on how to manage the VM better. We are going to go ahead and minimize or close this window here. Okay, and what it's doing right now is probably it's already loaded it. So how it loads it, it loads it as external media and it will appear here on your directory. So really what it did is use the external media right here to disconnect or connect in my in our case, right? Um, from the data store image, which is the VMware tools ISO. So we're doing a double click on it and it runs the auto start which will allows us to install the VMware tools. And this does take a little bit of time. Here we go. We're going to click on next. We're going to just do a, a complete install. So all the features that we, we want uh, from uh, the VMware tools. And we're going to go ahead and click on installed. This is going to take time because it needs to uh, install um, C++ and it needs to install .NET as part of the tools. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the uh, recording and I will continue when it's done which will be a time to reboot the, uh, the server again. Okay, so now we're done. We're gonna click on finish. And yes, we want to restart the server so that the uh, VMware tools take effect. Now, while the VMware tools or the system is rebooting, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my vCenter. and my VR ops so we can do them from scratch together because the first thing we have to have in order to build a lab properly is to have a DNS server uh, fully functional uh, mainly because the vCenter does require uh, to be uh, part of a domain so it needs to be uh, joined to the domain and once we're done with this it's going to be part one 
of Vidality Lab 2 and then we will continue with part 2 and part 3 so configuring the, uh, the vCenter and the VR Ops and then adding a uh, secondary host uh, to the lab a secondary SXI host Okay, great. So it looks like we're back up. Let's go ahead and log in. Make sure everything is working fine. Again, we are logging in as the domain administrator for the domain bwtlab.com that we just created. So two things that the uh, VMware tools do, or three things actually, is first they enhance the graphics. Uh, so you get better graphics uh, throughout and then also the ability obviously to not have to click and control alt to get out you are now fully functional on both and also the ability to drag and drop uh, in most cases that you can drag and drop files right into uh, from your um, desktop right onto your uh, VM we're going to test that right now. We'll see. Not in here. Okay. Okay, we're set. We're going to create a quick directory here called, or a quick um, folder for apps that we'll be downloading later on. And one quick check to make sure that we are running everything properly. Yes, so 105, let's make sure that works. So we should be able to ping them uh, from our local host. Okay, so. I am 100, that's why I couldn't take it. <laughs> and we're gonna see if we can ping our, um, and sure enough, we have no problems with it. So it is active and ready to go. And this concludes uh, our first part of the VWT Lab uh, 2. Thank you for watching and hopefully you'll watch the next steps which will allow us to install and connect the vCenter to it and also the VR Ops uh, <coughs> application.